White House is hitting back at the special counsel report detailing President Biden's, quote, willful retention of classified documents. The report didn't recommend criminal charges, but did find evidence Biden kept and shared highly classified materials while he was a private citizen. The Biden administration is criticizing the special counsel report for its characterization of the president's memory and age. CBS News senior White House correspondent Weijia Zhang has new reporting. Tonight, the White House is doing damage control, defending President Biden's mental fitness. I dispute that the characterizations about his memory that were in the report are accurate because they're not. And accusing special counsel Robert Hur, once a Trump appointee, of taking partisan shots at the president. The comments that were made by that prosecutor, gratuitous, inaccurate, and inappropriate. The way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts and clearly politically motivated. In the report, her referred to Biden's memory at least nine times, that it was significantly limited and appeared hazy, that he had diminished faculties in advancing age and was a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I'm well-meaning, and I'm an elderly man, and I know what the hell I'm doing. In a hastily called press conference Thursday night, the president was visibly frustrated and became emotional over hers mention that he could not remember when his son, Bo, died. How in the hell dare he raise that? He insisted his memory was fine, but at one point, President Biden confused the leaders of Egypt and Mexico. The president of Mexico, Sisi. Some fellow Democrats say Mr. Biden's attempt to defend himself fell short. There was not a prepared, clear agenda of, OK, here's my explanation, here's what I'm doing, and it didn't go well. OK, there's no doubt about that. That needs to get better. Former President Trump did not comment on the report at his rally Thursday. He, too, has faced questions about cognitive decline, recently mixing up Nancy Pelosi and rival Nikki Haley when discussing January 6. It's like Nikki Haley is in charge of security. Haley has blasted both men for being too old. Do we really want to have two presidential candidates in their 80s? Lija Jang joins us now from the White House. I, this has been an extraordinary response from the White House. We've had the president's news conference last night. The vice president was out today. Ian Sams, who's been leading the response to the special counsel, was at the White House briefing. We just, does this reflect a, a deep concern at the White House about the special counsel report and the emphasis on the president's memory? Well, Catherine, we have to remember that this is not a new problem for the White House and for the Biden campaign. There have been longstanding mounting questions about his age and mental sharpness. And so this only adds to those concerns. And that is why you are seeing so much damage control. That is why the president insisted that he could have the opportunity to take questions and address this head on. At the same time, though, Catherine, another issue might be how willing they are to acknowledge that Americans feel this way and have concerns about his age and cognitive uh, state, because when asked about it twice and how he would reassure voters who have those concerns, he grew angry and frustrated and lashed out at reporters for even asking the question. But certainly they are well aware that this is going to follow them well into the campaign. And now that you have it written out in this extensive report, uh, there are concerns about how this could do real political damage. Weijia Jang, I just want to follow up with one issue. At the White House briefing, you asked a very important question, which is how come the White House is accepting some of the findings of the special counsel that it didn't warrant criminal prosecution, but then rejecting other elements of his conclusions? Well, the White House says that both things can be true. They say that based on the facts and the evidence, the conclusion was correct, which is that charges were not warranted in this case. On the other hand, they say that Robert Herr went above and beyond what he ought to have in this report to lay out his observations of the president, and that is why they are dismissing them, saying they are subjective and not rooted in fact. But, Catherine, I think it's important to note the reason why Herr 
took this time to do it. It was part of his explanation for why he didn't bring charges. He wanted to explain that he felt a jury would view the president in the same way that he did, which is as a sympathetic elderly man with a bad memory. Lee Zhang reporting for us at the White House. Chuck McCullough joins us now. He's a lawyer and former inspector general. That's an internal watchdog for the U.S. intelligence community. Chuck, I want to fact check some of what we heard from Ian Sams at the White House briefing. And on uh, the vice president's personal notebooks that contain classified information, Sams suggests that there's an exception for personal diaries. Is that accurate? Well, well, there may be, but not when you're talking about classified information. Uh, you, the, the exception would apply to uh, an evidentiary rule for trial. But when you're talking about handling of classified information, it doesn't matter where it is. It doesn't matter what it's on. Okay. Ian Sams also emphasized that sensitive information shared with a ghostwriter by Joe Biden was never published. Um, but is that still a breach because of the need to know and clearance issues? Absolutely. Uh, with classified information, uh, that information can't be disseminated to anyone who doesn't have a need to know. It uh, can't be disseminated uh, other than in a, uh, the proper venue, in a secure area, in a secure means. So, uh, again, uh, the fact that it wasn't published is uh, mitigating, but uh, it still doesn't, uh, doesn't cure the situation. Okay. Sam's also called President Biden a witness in the special counsel investigation into the mishandling of classified records. Does that sound a little creative? Was there any other target of this investigation? He was a target. Uh, some people call them respondents. Some people call them subjects. Uh, he, he wasn't a witness in his own case. I suppose you could somehow creatively say that. But no, he was the subject of the case. OK. So most, uh, most investigators would call him the subject. OK. Uh, Sam's did not close the door on releasing uh, a transcript or supporting the release of a transcript of Mr. Biden's interview with the special counsel. Um, is there any precedent for that? Uh, sure. Transcripts uh, can be released. My suspicion would be that would be heavily redacted, uh, especially if there's classified material in the transcript. So, And they would redact names and that sort of thing. So any identifiers for people that were discussed. Um, there is precedent for that, uh, but I, I, I don't expect that to happen here, but who knows? Why do you say you don't expect it to happen here? Well, I, I don't know. I, I, it's, it's possible uh, that could happen. There is precedent for releasing uh, if the subject of the case uh, has a copy of it or uh, can request a copy of it uh, through FOIA, through the Privacy Act. Uh, and gets a copy of it, but it's not going to be uh, disseminable. Uh, by the time they get it, it will be uh, redacted again for PII, okay, privacy um, information. But as far as federal investigations go, now that it's closed, you know, as far as the FBI, Justice Department are concerned, these investigative evidentiary materials should be available at some point. You mean for public release? Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, not n not normally. Okay. Uh, the uh, it, well, the evidence in this case is classified. So, you know, I don't know whether the special counsel intends to release uh, the documents in the case in a redacted form. They can be redacted down to unclassified, uh, to, so that they're releasable. But uh, that wouldn't normally be something that you would do here because it's the POTUS involved. There's so much public interest. Uh, it, it's possible that could happen. We've been uh, showing images from the special counsel investigation of these documents containing classified information uh, in cardboard boxes, in, in drawers that are not locked, not secure locations. What do you tell security clearance holders who have lost their access for doing so much less? Well, that's a good question. You tell me what you tell all of these people. And that's, uh, I don't know how to reconcile this. Uh, people talk about a double standard. I, I don't know that the double standard is so much between uh, the, the current POTUS and the former POTUS, so that, that may or may not be true. But the double standard between the way POTUS is treated and the way that any other person uh, working as a civilian or military member of the U.S. government would be treated, 
uh, for, for this type of situation, you're going to be investigated and you're typically these aren't prosecuted criminally uh, because uh, the government doesn't uh, typically, the agency doesn't like to get involved in declassifying its documents for trial under something called SEPA. But typically, you're, uh, usually uh, the person who would do something like this is going to have their security clearance revoked, and they're going to be removed from employment. And that's obviously not going to happen here. It's the president. But if this was uh, just about anybody else in the federal government, uh, they're not going to be eligible for a clearance. So they're they're going to have the clearance revoked, and because the clearance is revoked, they're going to be fired from employment.